guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the Claire shoulder bag by Kaya Papaya. Um, I've done a couple of things different. I've got a different size handle because this is what my nan would like. Um, and I didn't put the vinyl accent around the interior zipper pocket just because I didn't have a stark white that would go with my fabric. So if you'd like to see how I make this bag, please stay tuned. So let's get started. So I've got my two strap connectors here and I just put a piece of double sided tape in the center and folded each side into the middle like so. So I've got two of those and now I'll be using D rings, uh, but you can, oh, I'm be using square rings, sorry, but you can use D rings if you want to. And then you just have a clip on your strap. So now that we've got, we want to kind of put it in the top third on there like that and then we're going to take some more double-sided tape and just put a small piece in the middle third and the tape's just going to help us hold it so I'm going to smooth that out peel off the backing and then thread the square ring or D ring on and then fold both these sides together like that and then we can just push that I'm still going to add two wonder clips so that it stays held until I'm up to actually doing it. But I just want to make sure it's not going to come off. Peel off the backing. Now I've got the instructions off to the side because I'm going to try and do it in the same order so that you can follow along. So I'm just going to fold both sides into the middle like that. And then I'm just going to add clips. Now my clip is holding both sides together. That's what I want the clip to do. So they're like that. Now I'm not even on that page. Okay. So they're done. So I'm going to put them in my bowl of hardware because uh, they're small enough to live there and I won't lose them that way. So now I'm going to take my strap. Now I'm making this bag for my nan for Christmas. So... We've worked out what strap is going to best suit her, which is this strap here, but you can change the length of the strap to whatever you like. So I've put a piece of tape uh, approximately in the middle. If you can't eyeball the middle, draw a line with a ruler. And then I'm just going to take both sides and fold them into the center, like so. Pinch and push. Now you could, if you wanted to, do the straps last. Uh, that wouldn't necessarily make a difference, like a problem. All right. So I'm just going to smooth that out and then I want to fold it over again and I'm going to crank it up to, I'm going to do a four and a half stitch length. I really want to see the white on this uh, since it is a black and white bag. So I'm going to stitch along the bottom and I do two stitches and then I'm going to back stitch through the same holes, needle down and pivot and then I'm just going to line up this folded edge and stitch one eighth of an inch from the edge of the vinyl. You want to go nice and slowly. There's no hurry. You want your top stitching to look amazing. So I always try and do mine in sections. And if you go too fast when you're stitching on vinyl, on this type of machine, you might not get very even stitches. Needle down and pivot. And then back the other way. So I'm going to go about the same speed so that my stitches are going to look the same. Oh, I heard that. I think I just ran out of bobbin thread. That was not what I was hoping for. Oh, I did. 
All right, I'm gonna hit pause while I do up another one because I forgot to do that today. It's all done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start two stitches back. So I'm gonna manually crank the first one and then go back through that same hole and then continue on so that I get a minimal impact as to where the join is. We don't really want to see it, so I'm going to try and hide it as best as possible. So if I chop that there and there, you can barely see where the join is. Obviously you can see it, but it's not super obvious. Like at a glance, you're not going to notice that. So. I'm thinking I want two more lines down this just to make it more black and white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an eighth of an inch from the stitching. Now this is totally not necessary. I just want it to look cool. So I'm going to do it. And then I can go down and across the bottom and go back up the other side. stitch along that shorter edge just to lock the stitches in that looks fun something a bit different I could, I could keep going and put them all the way through but I think I like that I like that a lot all right so I'm gonna put that aside because I don't need that right now and then the next step in the pattern is the exterior slip pocket now I'm this is the fabric that my nan chose. So if I fold this in half, the inside of the pocket's actually going to be upside down. And I don't love that idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half. Like that. And then I get my scissors, which have fallen down. There they are. And I'm going to cut it. Now this is going to create a slightly shorter pocket. But at least both my sides will be facing the right way. Uh, if your fabric's non-directional, then obviously you don't have to do this. And you can just fold it and continue on. But I want my pocket on the inside and the outside to be the same. Okay. So now, face this one right side up. And this one right side up. And I'm just going to use a really small seam allowance. As small as I can make it, actually. Just to rejoin them. So I'm going to use... I've gone back to a joining stitch length. And I'm using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So my pocket's going to be a quarter inch shorter. Um, another way to combat this would be to add a little bit when you're um, cutting it out. So now, now I've got a seam where I can fold and I've got my iron here. So I'm just going to iron that seam nice and flat, um, which I would still do even if I hadn't have sewn it, it would just potentially be a little bit easier. So I'm just getting that seam on the edge and I'm going to roll it and then I'm going to finger press it. And then we're going to use the iron to make it super flat. So I've just got a little mini craft iron here. I got this one from Aldi. So it's just a bit of a cheapie. But it does the job. Um, and my current ironing board is a towel on a little, I don't know, cabinet thing. Okay. So that's now ironed. So now we can, can just continue with the pattern according to the instructions. All right. 
So from this edge, we want to measure down and then insert our magnetic snap. So you need one gasket and the magnetic snap. Now because it's on this piece, we want to use the male piece, which is usually thinner with the sticky outy bit. That's why it's a male. Now we need to find the center. So I'm just going to fold it long ways like that so I can see the center now and then I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to measure down what it says I'm not giving out the measurements so there so I've just put a little mark that's at the center on that um, what's it called crease that I did and then I've measured down so then on that mark I want to put the center of my gasket on the mark I made because that's the center and then I'm just going to draw the lines on each side now I personally love using my craft knife so I'm just going to stab that in to cut those slits I find that the easiest and neatest way and then you're going to want some fray stopper glue now mine's coming to an end finally but I've had this bottle for I don't know probably nearly two years you only need a tiny little bit you just put like a dot now it comes out like water so be warned except it looks like my nozzle is a little bit blocked oh there we go right so I'm not gonna squeeze it because it comes out really fast see that like water slightly thicker than water but only slightly all right so then we're going to put in our magnet and then on the back put the gasket on and then I like to personally bend outwards um, some people prefer to bend inwards it's personal choice okay so now we can top stitch along this edge so because of where the magnet is we're not worried about top stitching into it and I'm just going to do what does it want quarter inch from the top so I'm gonna crank my stitch length up so it's more decorative I'm gonna do two stitches and then back stitch and then stitch along this top edge And then back stitch at the end. Trim those tails, put them in the bin. There's now our slip pocket. Next section. Assemble the exterior. So this is my exterior. On this I've got my hefty interfacing, which is what I've now decided to call it. Uh, if you go to my website, it actually describes what it is. But from now on, it's just hefty. And I've also got some fusible fleece on here as well. So we're going to lay this. We want to match the magnetic snap. So again, I'm going to find the center. And folding in half is the easiest way to do that. And then if you want to, you can also mark it with... A pen and then it tells you how much to go down from the top so there that's where the other half of our magnetic snap is going to go so the instructions or well, the measurements are in the instructions um, another way you could do it is you could just lay it on top and line it up if you wanted to I suppose all right so this is where we want the magnetic snap to be so I'm going to take my gasket I'm going to mark there and there and then take my craft knife again I'm going to do all the same steps again stab it in 
I find the craft knife much neater than a um a pair of scissors. You can get a much more precise cut with scissors. Come on. Gotta wait till the glue gets in the nozzle, but then once it's there, it's intense. Ah, right, there we go. On and bend out. Ta da! So now this should just clip onto there, like so. Okay, and then we're just going to top stitch this down. Oh, I know what I did. Right. So mine hasn't quite lined up at the bottom, and I've just seen why. Because I stitched that, I should have added that to the steam allowance. That's okay, not to bother. I can fix that. Because I've still got an accent I'm going to stitch along the bottom. So that little gap that I've got there is actually not a problem. I reckon. Yeah, so even though I've got a little bit of a gap here, I'm not worried about it because what's going to happen is this is going to sit over that. And so we're not going to see my little gap. So all we need to do now is top stitch this down out of the way. So I'm going in with a 1 8 seam allowance just to hold it in place. So it doesn't move later on. And then we can just go up the side and then chop off that excess. See how I've got this little extra bit here? We can now just trim that off. I should have got bigger scissors. They're over on my cutting table. Okay. Like so. And then that will just go on there like so. But we're not stitching that on yet. We're going to pop that aside and we're going to grab the other outside piece and we're going to do our exterior zipper pocket. So for that we need, sorry, I've just got a tub of all the pieces. So this is the other bottom piece. That's the base of the bag. Pockets, pockets. Facing! Here we go. So I've got two facings, one for the inside, one for the outside. Excellent. So I'm just going to take one of my facings and I'm going to draw the rectangle that is... Oh, here's a pen here. All right. I'm going to do it approximately in the center and then we're going to go down and down and then draw a rectangle. Mine's not perfectly in the center. I can fix that. This is an erasable pen so I can just iron it away and go again. So you want to get it roughly in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect but just roughly. There, there, and then I'm going to measure a 3 8 box. That's why I love using friction pens. If I put it in the wrong spot, I can just readjust. Oh, 
There we go. That's more in the centre. So now I just need to line up this where I want it. So I obviously want it in the centre. So you can even clip, just take a little nick out of that top so that we can see where the centre is. And then fold this in half and take a little nick out of this. This is the easiest way to line centres. And then that nick and that nick just need to line up. Like so. So that's now centered. So now I'm going to stitch around that box. I'm just going to move everything out of my way. So I'm going to start in the corner and I'm just back on a two and a half stitch length. So I'm going to do a couple of stitches forward and then back. Needle down, pivot, and then back to the start and back stitch like so. And then trim off those tails so that they're out of the way. And then we need to cut a, a line down the center. So I'm just going to bend it roughly in half and make a nick with my scissors so that I can get the scissors in and cut. Up to that edge and then I'm going to triangle out those corners now I'm going to go in the opposite direction and do the same thing and then triangle out these corners as well and then to remove some of the bulk if you want to, you can come back and just cut off some of this fleece. Uh, if this was foam, I would definitely worry about it. I'm not as worried about the fleece because it's not as thick. But if you wanted to, you could come and cut some of that fleece off. So now I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to fold this bottom one up and iron that straight edge. This is the way I do it off camera, so I'm going to do it on camera to show you. Then I'm going to iron this side, and what that's doing, it's giving nice crispy edges before I turn it through. And it just helps with keeping everything flat. So now when we push that through, this should be much quicker and easier to iron. I can show you this because this is fleece and not foam. Uh, so I'm not worried about ironing the foam to my table. All right, so now I'm just going to kind of wiggle these corners until they become nice and crisp and straight. And then I'm just going to take one side and I'm going to iron that edge again. You can do both at the same time, although it is a little bit more tricky. Uh, you can also shoot it with some steam. I forgot to put water in this. So I'm pretty sure I don't have any. No, there's no steam in mine. It doesn't hold a lot of water because it's little. So unfortunately I run out of steam pretty quick. Oh, it's got a little bit. And then I'm going to flip it over and iron it from this side as well, just to really keep that crease in there. And there you go. Nice ironed creased section. So I'm just going to use, oh, do I want black or do I want white? Or do I want silver? I might go silver. Even though I'm using gunmetal grey hardware, I think the silver's going to look good with the colour scheme that I've got going on because that almost looks black and white because it's such a light silver. 
So now we want to take our two zipper pocket pieces. We need to cut a piece of um, zipper tape the same length, like so. And then I'm still on my two and a half joining stitch length. I'm just going to tidy up my mess right now. So we're going to put lining side right sides up, zipper right sides up, and stitch really close to that edge so that we won't see these stitches later. And back stitch when you get there. So I've done closer to this edge than this edge because we're still going to stitch this inside that zipper box section so then again i'm going to take right sides up and right sides up and i'm also going to the top of the fabric because i want my fabric is directional and then i'm going to do the same thing again i'm going to stitch back stitch stitch along that edge doesn't matter if it's not perfectly neat, you don't see it, it's just to join this. Now we need to put a zipper head on. I just happen to have actual black ones, which are really fun. They're not even gunmetal grey, they're just actually black. I can't remember where I got them. But I only got two. I think they were like an accidental extra in the hardware I bought. But anyway, they're cute. And they work with this bag. So I'm going to put the zip on about two thirds of the way. And then I'm going to take this. And I'm going to lay it over the top. Of the zipper pocket panel. Like so. And then all I need to do. Is stitch that to there. Like so. Now most people like to start on their a long edge. So I'm going to do that today just for funsies. I usually start in the corner, but, you know, dare to be different and all that jazz. So I'm going to line it up right nice in the centre. And then I'm going to start here. Now I'm not going to backstitch because I'm going all the way around and it's not a corner. So I'm going to go needle down here and then pivot. And then over that zipper edge. And then pivot again. Now I'm making sure that everything's tucked away nicely. I'm always stopping with my needle in the down position because it's much, much easier. And I'm going to unzip it now just so it's out of my way since I've already stopped. Get to the end, pivot again. Home stretch. Needle down, zip it up, and back stitch when you get back to the start. So I only did about two stitches, and I've done it on a white section, so you actually won't see the back stitching because of the print that I've chosen. You can't see it, see? Because it fell on the white anyway so that's that done um just make sure your zipper still works it's going to move around that's important you want your zipper to work nice and smoothly and so now we've just got a little bit extra on this back piece so i don't even need to cut it off yet i'll cut it oh no i will i'll cut it off now so because they're laying flat you just cut up to that other piece right there. Chop all that off. And voila. Now they're even. So I'm just going to lay it right sides up and fold this to the side. And I'm going to stitch all three open ends or sides of this zipper pocket. Needle down. Pivot. Fold this out of the way. I should have done an extra bobbin. Oh well. And then up the other side. And then back stitch. Voila! 
Now what are we up to? I've done that, I've done that. Okay. Overlays. So this edge here needs to line up with the bottom of the bag, like so. And then I'm going to go up to my nice, big, decorative top stitching length, and I'm going to stitch this top edge. Now, if you're concerned about this moving, I will put it on one to show you. You just take some double-sided tape and stick it right in the middle. By sticking it in the middle, it's still going to hold it in place, but you're not going to stitch through it when you're top stitching, so you're not going to gum up your needle any more than you have to, but this will still hold it in place for you while you're stitching it. So I'm just going to take this and line it up and push from the center out so that I don't get any bumps. And then I can just start. And then we're gonna, we've done that straight edge, so now I'm gonna pivot and just go one eighth of an inch from that edge. I'm not going too fast because I don't want the vinyl to pucker or pull or stretch underneath my needle. And voila. Now I'm all about the decorative stitching today, apparently. Um, so I'm going to do a second line. Because why not? So I'm literally doing it one eighth of an inch from the first line. So I can just follow that along. Oh, see, that looks fun. Look at that. Two lines. I like it. You don't have to do that. Please don't think that you do. I'm just, you know, trying to show people other options. You don't just have to single stitch. The double stitch is also super cute. Uh, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So please don't think that I'm trying to make it more complicated than it is. I'm just all about the super decorativeness since it's my nan's Christmas present. All right, so again, roughly in the center, peel off the backing. My bin's nearly full. It's making life a little bit more difficult. And then line it up along the edge, like so, and press it down from the center and then push outwards. Uh, that, again, will eliminate any bubbles, bumps, and issues. And we're going to back stitch to lock those stitches in. I'm going to make sure my needle's down so I can pivot. And then across. And then back stitch. And then I'm going to do a second line. just to be cool. Needle down, pivot so it's straight, backstitch the last little bit. I like it, it's pretty. I like pretty. All right, trim off those tails. And now we're up to the base piece. So here's my base piece, and it's just occurred to me I haven't ironed on my base stabilizer. That is going to be important, and we are going to need it. So I'm going to have to pause again and go iron some base stabilizer on, because I want the base of this to be nice and stiff, and this won't be. Okay, all done. So I've now got my base stabilizer on here. So I'm going to move that pen and put it away. All right, so we're going to put right sides together here, and then I'm going to stitch along here with a joining stitch length. Back 
stitch and then we're going to just not cut the thread push this over and then top stitch with a longer stitch length along this edge here so just the short one to hold everything in place it's easier to do it in one swoop i've got less tails to trim so we're saving more thread we're going to back stitch that pull it out and then trim the tails off Ta -da! so then we're going to go back to adjoining stitch length grab the other side lay that along here I like to have this side up because then I'm going to be able to top stitch, which is why I flipped it over. It's also good to have all the bulk out of the throat of your machine. So we're going to back stitch. We're going to stitch along here. We're going to go slowly because there's a rise in the... Because of all the padding and stuff that stops here, it's got a little bit of a lip. Okay. I don't know why I trimmed that off. I should have left it because I've still got to top stitch it. But I guess it's too late now. So just going to slot it in, back stitch. I've cranked it up to a, join, uh, a decorative stitch length. We're going to stitch it down. Now, if you wanted to add bag feet to this, um, you definitely could. I would do that now while we can get to it. So you could put two there and two there, or you could put two, four, six. Um, whatever's going. Right, so we're going to put this right sides together. Now, it is recommended to use a non-directional fabric because the inside of my pockets are going to be upside down. But because they're smaller pockets, I'm not as worried. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the right sides together and I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch down the short edges like that and then trim off those tails and then I'm going to come and do the other side as well. Making sure that I back stitch at both ends. I'm sure you're sick of me saying it, but I do it anyway. And then I'm just going to cut off some of the bulk at the folded edge so that I get nice crisp pointy corners okay so then we just turn this out the right way like so and then I'm going to use my iron to iron that all beautiful and flat so my iron well my ironing board is currently just a towel uh, but it works until I get around to making a proper one and I'm thinking I'll make it match my other one just to be awesome okay so we've got this now one end that's a nice point this one however doesn't look as nice so I'm just going to take my stiletto and gently poke it and kind of lever out that corner now, you don't want to go too hard because you'll rip a stitch but just gently poke the corner out so it's nice and pointy. Alright. So now we are up to stitching this on top of here. Now I'm using vinyl so I've just cut one inch. If you wanted to use a fabric you'd cut two inches and then make it like a double folded bias. And if you want to you can also tuck over these edges so that you don't have raw edges. Uh, but I'm not worried about my vinyl. So I'm just going to come along and put a crease in at halfway. Now because I'm not tucking my edges in, it's going to be a little bit longer. But I can just chop off any excess I've got. So by putting that crease in, it's just going to be a little bit easier to top stitch this on. So I'm going to start at the edge and just fold that over. And then I've also gone up to a more decorative stitch length because I want this to look cool. So I'm going to stitch a few, back stitch a few. 
and then slot this over so that there's an even amount of vinyl on each side of that open edge. So we're going to seal the pocket at the same time as adding a decorative edge to it. And I'm stitching one eighth of an inch from the edge of the vinyl. And then I've got a little bit extra because I didn't tuck in the corners, but I didn't want to make it too thick that I couldn't stitch it. Trim those tails like so. And then because I've done double stitching on everything else so far, I'm going to do double stitching on this just to keep with the program. So I'm going to stitch, back stitch, and then off I go. And then when I get to the end of the fabric, I'm going to back stitch again. So now I've got double lines. Take some scissors and just chop off that excess because it's vinyl. If it was fabric, you would have had to have tucked it under because you don't want raw edges of fabric. Uh, but I'm not so worried about the vinyl. Okay. So this is now the start of my awesome pocket. I like the double stitch look. I feel like the theme is going along quite nicely for me. Okay, so now we take this and there is specific measurements that I need. So I need a ruler and I'm going to need a Chaco pen because I'm on black. So I'm going to take my white one because obviously that's easier to see. And then we want to go up from the bottom edge here and we need to draw a line. Now I'm going to find the center so that I can center this line so that my pocket's centered. I feel like that's important. So I'm just going to fold both sides in half like this, clip it so that I can see what's going on. All right, so here's my center. So I'm just gonna do like a little line that way so that I know where the center is. And then I'm gonna put even amounts of the ruler that I need to rule my line with on each side. So now I've got my line. And then I'm gonna mark this line as well just so I can see it because that's the center. And if you want to, you can put lines on the edge so that you can see where you're about to attach your pocket, like so. Didn't need to put all those, but if you're a visual person, and shake off the excess chalk dust, if you're a visual person, that's where we need to be stitching. So it doesn't matter which side you pick first, but I'm going to line this bottom edge up along the bottom and then stitch down this side. Oh, my dog's just farted and it is gross. That is disgusting, Knuckles. Oh, it's real bad. All right, so we're stitching right along that edge. We're going to back stitch at the bottom and then we're going to cut it off. And then I'm going to go and do the opposite side. So we're going to come over here, line it up along the bottom. And then I'm going to stitch this side. I'm going to back stitch to lock it in and then stitch up and back stitch back at the top. So this is what we've got so far and it's just like big and weird. And then we're going to find the center of the pocket and put it at that center line. So the easiest way to do that is fold it in half like so. Put a crease in that bit and then that crease needs to line up on that line. There. You can also, um, if you wanted to, use a Chaco pen to mark it. So you could do it like this and then just mark it this way. If you wanted to. I don't actually need to. I don't know why I'm showing you that. Just in case, I guess. And then we're going to line that line 
up with the other one and stitch that down. So I'm going to start, doesn't matter if you start at the top or the bottom, wherever it makes you happy. Like so. Now I could have done two, I probably should have done two lines there to keep with my double lining trend. But one line is going to do. I could also do three lines if I wanted to. And so now what I want to do is I want to smooth this out so it's flat. So along this bottom edge, what I want to do is I'm aiming to get this flat, right? So like that. But I want to tuck these in evenly so that this edge will touch there and be flat. Like that. So that is what I'm aiming for, flat and even, so that my pocket is then even. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stitch half and then I'll come and do the other half. So I'm going to stitch, hold it flat and even, stitch along that edge, and then I'm going to stop with the needle down and I'm going to adjust this second one. Now you could also pin it. That's not necessarily a problem, uh, but I am very clearly not going to pin it because I am going to lay it down like so. So at that middle point, it should touch each other just slightly. And then you can continue stitching until you get to the end and then back stitch. Now obviously mine's in white because I'm trying to be all accented and cool, but if you did it in the same color, that would also look nice because it would blend. So now I just need to crease this top bit so it's not as sticking up because of the vinyl. This would be easier to fold down if you were using a fabric. But I now have two slip pockets on one side. So that's that lighting piece done. Next up is the inside. So I'm going to take this one. And so... I've got the same, I did realize this halfway through, I forgot to tell you. Because my fabric is directional, I've cut the same pocket pieces for the inside as the outside zipper pocket. Uh, the outside zipper pocket actually just had one big one that you loop, but because my fabric's directional, I don't want upside down magpies where I can help it. So I've got the same pieces cut here, which are the same ones I use on the outside. So that's just possibly something I should have probably mentioned. All right, so we're going to, again, rule our rectangle. And I do 3 eighths of an inch down. Like so. Whoops. Like that. And then we're going to just repeat the same process we did for the outside pocket. So I'm going to line it up. Again, I want to try and find the center of everything. I want things to be even. <laughs> oh. There's a lot of pollen out and about today. Okay, so you put your pocket kind of wherever you want. I'm going to put it there. You can put it further down, further up. I don't want it too close to the top, but I also don't want it too far down because I don't really want it in this bottom bit. So I might move it up just a smidgen. Maybe to there. There looks good. Right. Needle down, pivot, I know you're sick of me saying it. Needle down, pivot. Just run out of bobbin thread. Again. All right, I've got to do another bobbin, so I'm going to hit pause. So then I've fixed my uh, bobbin, 
and I just stitched over that last little bit to lock in the stitches. It was literally only the back stitching that didn't work. All right, so I'm going to snip the center of the rectangle I stitched, and then I'm going to use my scissors to cut near the end, and then about half an inch from the end, I'm going to triangle out those corners. So you want to try and get as close to your stitching as you can without snipping it. If you accidentally um, get your stitching and you cut it, just go back in and stitch that little kind of corner section again. So then again, I'm going to come and I'm going to push up against this seam to iron it up. I know I should have a um, towel down. I'm going to do the rest on my ironing board though. So now I'm going to push it through the hole like so. And then I'm going to iron. So now that I've ironed that flat, it will be easier to pinch and iron again. So I'm just going to do that on my ironing board here. And I also like to use my thumbs to push those corners right in. And you can stitch it from the, uh, iron it from the front or the back, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to iron that down. Flip it over. I'm going to iron from the top now. And if you've got a corner that's not being super pointy, you just grab the back piece and kind of pull and twist it until all the corners come out and be nice and crisp. So sometimes it takes a bit of maneuvering. It depends on how thick all your interfacing and stuff is. Um, so the outside was more difficult to iron than this will be because it was thicker. It had the hefty interfacing as well as the fusible fleece as well as the fabric. Uh, whereas this is just two pieces of cotton and two pieces of medium woven interfacing. So it's much, much thinner, so it should be more pliable and easier to get a nice crisp iron on. All right, this corner still giving me grief. I'm not sure why. Apparently it just feels the need to, but I am going to continue ironing it until I get it done. Just gonna, there we go, that's better. Okay, so now I can pop that over there. And I'm going to grab my zipper. And my two pieces. So along the top edge of your stuff, we're going to do this exactly the same as the outside. So I'm going to stitch this along. Back stitch when I get to the end. Trim that off. And then I'm going to do the same to this edge. So we put uh, lining side right side up and then zipper right side up. Now I've cut my zipper like a quarter of an inch too long. So I'm going to make sure that these edges line up because that's where I started. Back stitch. And then we're stitching close to the edge of the tape. Because we don't want to see our stitches while we're trying to attach the zipper. All right. I'm going to grab my other black zipper pull. So I'm going to put a love heart one on the main part of the bag because I only had two of these, but these look really nice for the zipper pockets. All your zippers don't have to match on a bag. Please remember that. Do it however you want. You can put like just the fancy zip on the outside and the rest can all have plain, or you can switch it up like I am. There's not really a right or wrong. Now, I always like to have my zipper pull to the left. That's just my thing. So I'm going to sit it the way I want it. And I'm going to have the zipper pull laying back over where I want it. And I've zipped it about, this one I've done about three quarters. But usually I do about two thirds of the way along. So that then I can lay this down exactly where I want it. And to make sure that everything's lining up nicely. 
And then I'm going to start from my short edge because it's a habit that I have. I've just done two little back stitches. I'm going to move Scully and my clips so I don't knock them. I don't feel like making a mess today. And then when I get close, I'm going to put my needle down, lift up my foot and unzip so that it's not in the way. Needle down and pivot. Now, I didn't use any vinyl accent on this. Um, mainly because I don't have white. I would have liked a white vinyl accent, but I've only got off-white and it's just not as good. Um, but it does have a vinyl overlay that you can use. Um, a lot of pa uh, patterns have it. I have done many videos on how to do the vinyl overlay. So you can definitely do it if you want to. You could have done it to all the pockets. So now I'm just going to trim off the excess so the, pa uh, the pockets match. And then what they've done in the pattern is they actually fold back about half an inch like this. So I'm going to take my iron and just iron back half an inch. And this is going to make the pocket neater when we turn it. So then I'm going to fold this bit back as well and iron this. Now again, I recommend you use an ironing board, but for me to switch back and forth is just ridiculous. I'm going to get a piece of ply board and make myself a portable one, uh, just not today. I don't have time today. But I will do a video on how I make it, I promise. Okay, so now that that's folded back, we're going to stitch down the sides. So we want to stitch that down. So I'm going to fold the main panel all the way out of the way, over there. And I'm going to start here. Oops. Should have held on to that tail. I knew it was too short. I swear my machine likes messing with me sometimes. All right. Fold that over out of the way. Stitch. Now I'm going to make sure that these are all pointed up and then stitch down the edge and then back stitch like that. I'll come back and trim all the tails in a minute because I have plans. Then I'm going to start there and back stitch and then stitch it shut like that. Now trim off all the tails, obviously. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut off the excess on an angle. Because what that's going to do is when we turn it through, when we're doing our final stitch, it's going to make them sit just flatter. So you, just, you don't need to take off a lot, just a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can see that. So we've got closer and then I just kind of veered it out. That's just going to help later. So, zipper open. We need to make sure that we can get in there. And then that's that piece done as well. So now we are up to overall construction. So we're going to take some zipper. That much there. That's our zipper. And then I just need a zipper pull to hold that thought for a second. I always like to wind up my zipper tape as I go. It just keeps it neater. So I wind it like that. And then I've just got a rubber band around it and it all just goes in a tub because I don't have space for a wall hanging. Otherwise I get one of those things that has all the pockets, but it's just not something I have space for. So I don't bother. All right. Zipper pull. It says to install the zipper. So we're going to install the zipper. As required. So you just stick in one half and then the other half. Or you can use your zipper jig if you'd prefer. Yeah, man. There we go. Okay, zipper is on. I'm just going to seal both of those edges. Ends, edges, whatever. 
That way the zipper can't accidentally come off in anything that we're about to do. I'm also going to take a lighter and just singe that down like that. Singe this one as well, just so I don't have any kind of fallout. And then I'm going to seal this end of the zipper. We're not going to see it anyway. And this is just ensuring that I don't have any zipper drama later. So, now we have to find halfway. It's a Chaco pen. I've got it on my ruler. I'm just going to mark halfway. And this is where all of my halfway marks come in. Because I've done them all. So, what we want to do is we want to put the halfway mark at the halfway mark. Scully's got to come back. We're going to need Scully. So we're going to clip it at the centre like this and then I'm going to work out. Now they've got quite a lot of clips going on so I'm going to do a lot just in case it's a necessary thing and you'll notice that I'm only clipping one together at a time so I'm clipping the zip to the lining so I've got both right sides facing me. After this I am then going to get the exterior piece and add it in. All right, lots and lots of clips to hold the curve in place. Then we've got minimal shifting while we're trying to stitch it. So then I need an exterior. Well, whatever exterior piece. So if I want this, so with my zipper closing left, I'm going to take the side with the pocket and add this on top. Line up the edges. Line up the center. Should be around here somewhere. There, that one. Line up the center. And then add the, line, uh, the exterior piece into the clips with the lining and the zipper. Now you can try and do this three, like all three pieces at the same time. I find this much, much quicker. Right, like that. So I've now got all three layers clipped together. I'm on my joining stitch length. My batteries are dying in my lights, I saw that. So I'm just going to start here and I'm going to back stitch as always and then I'm just going to slowly stitch down. Now I'm running this part of my foot along the edge of the zipper. I folded this up so that it wasn't kind of pulling. With all that weight off the table it was trying to pull the bag. So by folding it up I've just stopped that problem. Now I'm nearly at the zipper. I can feel it, so I'm just going to zip past where I've stitched and then continue on. And then back stitch there. Pull this out. Put my clips away. And then we're going to top stitch just the outside. So I'm going to lay that seam allowance face down so fold it down on itself like that and then I'm going to top stitch now if you want to you can go to a more decorative top stitch I'm going to and I'm just going to slowly go and I'm going to reach my hand underneath and pull that seam allowance under to make sure that I'm stitching it as I go. Because it's a curve, it's going to try and be tricky. So I just want to do it in small sections and then pin it down with my fingers on top and then fold it under and pin it down on top. So it's just a slower process, but you want to make sure that you're catching that seam allowance because it's going to make the bag sit flatter and it's just going to look nicer. So I'm going slowly but surely like so and then because I'm doing everything in a double stitch I'm going to come back and double stitch that uh, you don't have to do this step I'm just going to because I want it to look like that that's my thing today and 
And I'm making sure that the lining's not getting stitched in all of this. second line of stitching did nothing but look cool so don't think that you have to do it I'm just keeping that aesthetic going with everything like that okay now for the other side so move the zipper to somewhere doesn't really matter where we've got our center line and so now I'm going to clip this center line so I'm gonna do the exterior first to the zipper this time because it's now already attached so either way I've got to take this weight so I may as well do it now so I'm just clipping up my clips are about half an inch apart or thereabouts you can put as many or as few clips as you want but I do highly recommend clipping it because it's a curve Straight things I tend to clip a lot less, but curvy things, it's important to do. You know what? Because I've sealed that zip, I can actually probably put the zipper all the way off the end. And you'll notice that I'm still making the clips face the um, exterior piece. And there goes the one, the clip, that I have to drop apparently every single time. And so then I'm going to take the lining piece and add it in. You can add it in however you like. I've done the two edges and then I'm going to come along and do the centre, I reckon, which is there. And then all of that should fit into all of the space. Okay, so now it looks like this which is fine. I'm also not going to need my iron anymore, so I'm going to turn it off because I can hear it ticking beside me and it's annoying. Okay. So, back to our joining stitch length. Grab Scully so that we can fill her up. And then trim off those tails, of which there are many. And then I want a top stitch. So this is where we're going to get all fun. I'm going to fold this bit down. And I have to get kind of in the loop. So I'm going to fold it down, crank it up, and then I'm just going to make sure that I go slowly but surely. So we're going to end up with like this weirdo loop thing, uh, but that's okay. Make sure your zip's all the way open because it's going to make this a lot easier. Always stop with your needle down so that you can see what you're doing. And then I'm just doing the same as I did before. I'm just also fighting this big part of the bag right here. That's okay. It's not impossible to do. It's going to look cool, so it's worth it. It's always worth it if it looks good. I'm making sure that that bit underneath is still tucked under where I'm trying to stitch. And you can, because I've opened the zip, you can just keep pulling on this so that you can see. my second line of stitching 
which I'm now starting to regret, but it's fine. Actually, that side was much easier to do. So there we go. Trim off the tails. And voila. So now what we want to do is we're going to stitch these sides. I should actually check to make sure that's a true sentence. That side. That side. It is true. Okay. So. First thing I want to do is line up the bottom and add a clip. Then I want to line up the accent for the vinyl to make sure that they're matched up and add a clip. Then I'm going to jump all the way up to where the zip is and I want to line up the fabric at the zip and clip that. And then we can just add clips in to the middle willy nilly so that it's all held together evenly. Like, whoops, that. I've got all my clips facing the right way too. Then we're going to continue this down. So I'm going to come to the bottom of the lining over here and I'm going to line that up because that's important too. And then line that up and I'm going to work my way up to here. And clip the lining. Oops, it's got a bit of a twist in it. There we go. And just keep clipping the lining as many or as few as you want. Like that. And then I can stitch down that edge. I'm going to go back to my joining stitch length. I'm going to do a few stitches and back stitch. Now I'm always going to start at the exterior end because that's the thicker end. And it's easier to get thinner and not thicker. It's easy to step down from stuff than step up from stuff. So we're going to get to there, needle down, pivot, and then continue down the line. And then pull that out and trim the tail. fun wasn't it then I'm gonna do the other side as well just while we're at it and then we'll add our strap connectors so line up the bottom line up your accents because that's what's going to attract the eye that's why we have to line up our accents we want it to be exactly even so that all the way around the bag it's seamless Especially if you've done like a very contrasting accent. You don't want it to be crazy noticeable if it's crooked. So by adding a clip to make it even, it helps. I promise. Okay. Now we're going to stitch all the way through. So I'm going to start on the thickest part. And work my way down. Needle down and pivot. Like that. Now we need these. So I've had plenty of time to sit, but I'm just going to add another piece of double sided tape so that I can stick them in place while I stitch them. That's too big of a piece. You only need a little bit. But that bit's too little for the other one. A little bit like that, right in the center. And this is going to help hold it in place while we stitch it down. Okay. So I'm going to peel off this backing. After I make sure it's nice and stuck. 
peel off this one as well. Make sure they're both nice and stuck. And now, by opening the bag and we're going to this side. So what you want to do is you want to open this out so it's flat. You want to open this seam up so that we can place this piece on that seam. So I'm just going to crush the bag completely out of my way like this so I can see. And now I can get to, I know you can't really see it, but I can now get to where I want to place that. So I'm just going to take this and place it directly on that seam. And how far down do I want to do it? So I'm going to go a little bit further down. I need my ruler so I can measure. So I want it right there. So now that I've measured it, I'm going to lift up the needle and slide all of this bulk through just so I can get it into there. Now you're not going to be able to see this, so I'll try and describe it as best as possible. I'm feeling with my fingers to make sure that the underneath is down flat. And I'm going to start at the top edge where my square ring is. And I'm going to stitch two stitches and then back stitch and then stitch along there. And then I'm going to pivot and go diagonally down. I'm making sure that my seam underneath is open and flat because it's going to make it sit more evenly. So you just want to really open it out. You might even want to um, iron it in place. So I'm going to stitch diagonally across to make like an X shape. Oh, none of that worked. Hold on. Something's being stubborn somewhere. So I'm just going to show you what happened. None of my stitches worked on that diagonal. It's just got like a weird mess. Which is fine. My top stitching worked. So I'm going to come along. I'm going to pull out that zigzag part that didn't work. I only got two stitches in that whole line. So I'm going to come along here and I'm going to... I'm going to cut out this excess that's in my way, which is part of the pocket. It's not allowing it to open up properly. So I'm just going to cut the excess out and now that's going to sit flatter. Because I always win. So now we're going to try it again. So I'm going to lift the foot and slide all of this under. We're going to try again. Needle down, and then off we go on a diagonal again. So we're going to try it again. And I'm going slowly to make sure it's going to work. Down the side, up the other diagonal. Needle down, pivot, and then down the side. And then back stitch. Yes. See, look at that. Trim off those tails, pull this out.
Excellent. Now we're going to do the other side one. So this is a little bit, it is a little bit tricky. I'm not going to lie. But it's not impossible. So I'm going to start by trimming down the excess where the pocket is. Because it's a pocket, it's a lot thicker. I just don't want this excess there in my way. By cutting it off, it is no longer in my way. I chopped down all that one too. Okay, I feel better about that. So now we're going to do the same thing. So the bit that I didn't chop out, I'm just going to lay down flat. Which isn't a lot, but it's a little bit, and it's enough. Even though I turn this off, it's still quite hot, so I'm just going to push with some heat to make it sit flat like so. Lay it down, squish it back, grab my ruler, wherever I've just put it, over here. And then I'm going to measure down. there and then just lay that over where it needs to sit I'm not gonna lie it's gonna be a little bit fiddly this but it'll be worth it it's gonna look amazing so I'm gonna take off the wonder clips from the sides and I'm just going to slowly bring that bulk up under the needle to get my needle where I want it now this side's a little bit trickier because this is where my zip is opening to so the zip's kind of an added piece of fighting material just you know because it can I guess so we're going to stitch along the top and then I'm just going to stop there and trim that and then I'm going to go and I'm going to do the bottom. So I've trimmed the top, I've sewn the top, now I'm going to sew the bottom and then from the bottom I can do the zigzag. So I'm going to sew the top bit, cut it off, sew the bottom and then zigzag down the side, zigzag down the side. And that's going to hold everything in place with minimal effort, I'm hoping. Needle down, pivot. Now we're going to go slowly over this pivot because it is quite thick and bulky. You may also want to rivet these down depending on your um, machine's capabilities. So down to the corner and then up the diagonal. It definitely has helped to cut that bulk out, I promise. And then down the side and back stitch. That side actually went a lot smoother because I cut all that excess out. I'm quite happy with my decision to do that. Alright, trim your tails. So that's officially the trickiest part of the bag, but they're going to look nice so it's worth it, in my opinion. I'm going to trim off those other tails later because they're a bit tricky to get to right now. Now, just to make sure I'm doing it in the same order as this. Yep, so we're going to now take the corners and squish them down flat so that they're even and flat and beautiful, and then we're going to stitch across there. So I'm just going to add some clips and we're going to stitch across that corner like so. I'm going to go back to adjoining stitch length. I don't need my decorative one now. If I had to use my decorative one on what I was doing before though we wouldn't have got very far. All right. Trim off the tails. I missed the tail. Look at that. So we're going to do the same here as well. So we're going to fold it out, clip it down, 
like so. And then we're going to stitch along the edge. Like so. Making sure we back stitch. And then trim off that tail. So now our bottom's done. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is. Now. I'm thinking that I'm going to turn the bag the right way out right now. I'm thinking about the easiest way to close up this bottom without it giving me any grief. So I'm going to turn the bag through the entire base and then I'm going to do up the base through the zipper pocket. Might seem excessive but I think it's going to work out pretty well. So I'm just pushing it all through. I often use my knees to grab onto the bag so I can push with more force to get everything turned out nicely. Poke the corners out like so. And then we're going to do the same on this corner. Poke that out as well. Make sure that's all nice. I'm running my finger along that seam and now I can get to these tails much, much easier than before. Like so. Okay, I'm pretty happy so far. Push out all of that. All right, so now through the zipper pocket, I'm gonna grab pretty much the whole lining and pull it through. because it's going to be far too tricky to turn the whole bag through that lining space, uh, the zipper pocket space. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take some clips and clip the whole base of the bag. You can use as many or as few clips as you like. I'm going to use a few so I can show you. So I clipped the edge, then the center, and then in between those points, and then I can come back and do the same thing again here. So I'm going to do like that. So it won't sit perfectly straight, but that's what we're going to sew up the whole base of the bag right now. Because turning can be tricky. And you want as much space as you can get to do it. Whereas that was pretty easy to stitch. So then we're just going to take these side points and do the same thing. So line it up at the center. And then if you want to, you can add a few more clips. And then we're going to stitch along that open edge. Making sure that we back stitch at both ends. Oop. And then the same with this end. So we're going to pull it, line up that center, and I'm just going to add a clip at the center, under the needle, and off we go. We also want to make sure that this um, base seam are going in the right direction, so the same like the same direction. So that's something I just had to fix then. Trim the tails. And now the base of your bag is done. So if you push that through, you can see that there's now no holes in the base of the bag. It's a bit hard to see because it's black, but you do get the idea. Shovel that in. Now when we pull this pocket out, because we ironed it, you should just be able to grab it and pull. And it should sit nice and flat in the corners because we chopped out that extra... Um, fabric and now we can just stitch it shut because we pre-ironed it before that should be very very simple to do you'll notice I didn't need any clips to do it now 
Now I'm just poking the corners back into the zipper pocket. Zip that up. And then I'm going to push the base down. Make sure everything's going on there. And then I'm going to zip the top of the bag up. Like so. And now we just need to add our handle. Now my nan only likes little handles. So as you can see I've just got a little handle going on. So, I'm going to take my Chaco pen because it's black and I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to measure half an inch up from the base, oh actually, yeah, half an inch up from the base and then one inch from that point because I've only used the thin metal, not the thick metal. And then the same with this, I'm going to measure half an inch up from the base and one inch up from that point. Now the reason I do a full half inch from the base is because if I did it too close and you over fill the bag, it'll be too heavy, which is obviously not what we want. We don't want a heavy bag. I've just got to push out that seam a bit nicer. If you overfill your bag, and your rivets are too close to the edge, you're more likely to damage and rip off the handle, which is obviously not what we want to do. So now I'm going to take my hole punch and I'm going to punch holes right in the middle at the marks that I've just made on both ends. Like that. handle's got a bit of a twist so I can actually just twist it in the opposite direction and it usually levels that out. So I want to go up this way, up from the bottom and then put my rivet that way. You can do two rivets if you want to. I've also got some um, tails there that can be melted down just so that they're not going to pop out and annoy me. And then I'm going to put the cap on the rivet like this and squish it down. That's one side. And then I'm going to come across to the other side. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to melt these. They're not very long, but they're just long enough to annoy me. So you want to make sure that nothing is twisted. And then go through this side. And then poke that through. And then put the rivet on there as well. And then I'm just going to squish that rivet and your bag is done. And voila. Love it. I need to um, give it another final iron to get it all out properly because uh, as you can see here this seam isn't sitting as flat as I would like uh, but that's just some maneuvering where you fold it over and then do the Tory squish. So I will be doing that to this bag to give it its final glorious look because just there needs some loving. Uh, but apart from that the bag looks great. Um, I hope that was helpful. My my zip needs a bit of a steam. You can see it's sitting a bit funny. It'll be right. But there you go. That is one bag complete. I hope this was helpful. Um, and until next time, guys. Bye.